Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am in Tonopa, Nevada. I'm in the station there, 206 by Thronda. All right, so let's get in and uh, and pull up the general tab, and let's get rid of all these tie downs. My passengers just climbed aboard. All our cargo is loaded so I can shut all my doors. Now, for those of you who do not know, Thrunder has this thing they call DGS or Dynamic Generation Series where it, where you can dynamically generate um, different panels or create your own panels and you can dynamically generate liveries. Now, right now, what you're looking at is a custom livery, and I've got some control over the colors. I can, um, this is what the livery looks like uh, inside the box here, and if I wanted to um, change the color of the struts here, then I could just select struts and then I could go here and here. Let's see what would be a nice color. We don't want to make this aircraft too psychedelic. Um, so so let's, uh, let's pick a neutral color. Let's try this color here. And I simply can apply it. I can also change my tail number. Uh, the tail number I'm using right now is 1216 uniform, uh, but I can easily change it to anything I want uh, just by typing, clicking here, and then typing whatever I want to type there. Actually, wouldn't be a good bad time to go ahead and change the color of the tail number. Let's uh, let's pick. Yeah, let's pick. Um, Let's see, let's pick red. Guess this this um, maroon a rust looking color works for me. I'm not sure how it's showing up on your monitor. But anyway, uh, so let's apply that. This is the new color of the struts. All right, so next, what do we have? Um, weight and balance. Now, right now, I've got um, my weight. Uh, well, that's a little heavy for me, so let me just pull that down to about 160. All right, so I got me, um, the my partner, and um, my friend's partner, my friend, and we got 90 pounds of cargo in the tail of the aircraft and 150 pounds of cargo in the cargo pod, which I can toggle on and off as, as I want it. And you can see how that 150 pounds that I got in there is weighing the aircraft down. Um, but um, but yeah, I'm going to leave my 150 pounds there because um, um, we're taking a lot of stuff. Yeah, we subscribe to the school of thought better to need it and not ha better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. All right, and. If you look and see, you can see that I'm also I am still in my in my envelope for for weight and balance. So this is my envelope here. Uh, assuming that you can see my cursor. And let's see, so so yeah, and let me just uh, make the the this zero and you can see well I didn't I doubled it but you can see how how 300 pounds would put me outside the envelope for weight and balance uh, you can also see how adding the weight shift the um, the make the whole the fuselage of the aircraft way down a little bit uh, so let's go back to my 150, and the same happens no matter where I change the weight, it adjusts accordingly. All right, camera, um, Thronda provides some default views so that 
that correspond to my num number pad and sounds okay so I like to turn my mouse to volume up okay and panel this is another part of the G the DGS dynamic generations series I want I know I want to use panel preset 6 um, which has the GTN um, so I'm just gonna cycle through these guys really quickly that's three four see it has the as the Aspen glass panel five and then it adds the GTN but I want to use steam gauges in the GTN 750 um, let's see I go down to six okay so I got six so I got my standard six pack well it's not my standard six pack because um, because my where well, my head and um, I can choose a more traditional head and indicator if I wanted to uh, the one that's that's usually found in the Cessna 172 if I wanted to but um, but I'm not going to spend any time changing stuff around. If I did want to change stuff around, then then I could, um, let me turn the yoke off. I could take this and pull it up here and take this one, pull it over here, take this one, drop it right here, and boom, there you go. Uh, just that simple and turn it off. And you can see how simple it was to switch places with these two instruments um, so so yeah alright and then dropping down one more time miscellaneous I can add skis let me jump outside so you can see the skis are on it now I can add wheel fairings um, right now I've got regular tires on it with the fairings I have to have regular tires but I can take the fairings off and now I can add tundra tires which is which is my preference if I was gonna be going to a if I was doing some backcountry flying then I would I would put these mud flaps on and of course if you look at the windows, I think right now I prefer the bubble windows because that gives an inch or two more and you'd be surprised how much it, a couple of inches of headroom makes. And let's see, go back to regular windows. Uh, so, yeah. It's subtle, but that um, that inch or two makes a difference. All right, so quick glance around the cockpit. You can see the the nice texturing, the the modeling that that Rhonda has put into this aircraft. Uh, it was back when smoking was normal, so it comes with ashtrays for the, both the pilot and the co-pilot. I'm uh, yeah the co-pilot, uh, or the passenger, the front seat passenger, and the cockpit. All right, so let's get rid of that. Let's turn our yoke on. You can see what the yoke is, looks like. And this aircraft was made back when station wagons were in vogue. So Cessna considered this aircraft the station wagon of the air hence the name station there all right so let's get this flight underway now it does come with a checklist uh, so pre-fight pre-flight is um, pretty much done everything is off and coal and dark fuel is on all right so pre-flight still in pre-flight all the covers are moved and I'm just kind of glancing through it. I'm not really um, doing a thorough pre-flight, but you can uh, to increase the immersion when you fly this aircraft. All right, so 
before start an engine. Pre-flight inspection is complete seat, seat belts, shoulder harness, adjust and lock. Brakes, test and set. All right, so, so yeah, let's, uh, let's test the brakes. Yep, they are working and they are set. Okay, uh, cow flaps, make sure that they are open and they are this is my cow flaps here and avionics power switch needs to be off and it is all right and i flip it on just to verify and master switch can come come on and fuel selector should be on the fullest tank or the fuller tank and this is my fuel and i've got just a little bit more fuel in my left tank than I do in my right tank. So the long part points to what's to the position and I've got um, my left tank selected. All right, circuit breakers are all in and they are modeled. So it is important that you give it a, a glance. Now my all right, so let's get the engine started. Mixture, rich, prop, high RPM. Propeller, high RPM. All right, and throttle is closed. Okay, auxiliary fuel pump is off. And that's this guy here. And let's hollow, let's let's clear for let's clear left, clear right, and clear prop. Leave that window open for a minute. And ignition switch start. Check my ore. Oil is in the green. All right. I can uh, let me close this to cut down on the noise, so I don't have to compete with the engine sounds. And I can go ahead and put my headset on. All right. Cool beans. And what's next? Um, radios can go on. All right, so that's uh, that's um, well, avionics and radios. So let's turn our avionics on. And why is my GTN not coming on? So after a bit of troubleshooting, I was finally able to get the autopilot to to come alive. But I did restart the sim, so uh, I'm, I believe I got everything pretty much in the same configuration that it was in before I left. Anyway, um, yeah. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Come to automated weather observation, Tonopah. Wind one five zero degrees at seven knots. Visibility more than ten miles. Sky clear. Temperature minus seven. Dew point minus twelve. Altimeter two nine six two. Two nine six two. All right. So winds were. Let me turn that off. Winds were 150 at 7. All right, so we're going to use runway 15. That's a no brainer, isn't it? All right, so let's, um, let's see. I think we are actually pop that open. Yeah, so we'll just take alpha to 15. Go um, straight out. Boy, this, this GTN make, make situ situational awareness really good okay our terminal was 2962 so let's get that dialed in 2962 
pretty low pressure there. And the field elevation was 5,400. We are within 75 pounds of, uh, 75 pounds, um, 75 feet of what we expect. So that, that works out. And let's get this taxi started. All right, so taxi lights on. And tax lights on. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So it looks like I get one light with taxi and two with landing. So I think when I do, when I want to use my landing, I want to burn both my taxi and landing lights. All right. So. I didn't clear to make sure nothing was out there. All right, here we go. Okay. So, holding short. And Tenopath, uh, Tenopath, Tenopah traffic. So, Cessna 2, let's see, what was my call sign? Uh, just that quick, I forgot it. Uh, that wasn't my call sign. So, I need to fix this because this wasn't the call sign that I that I recall using. So what happened, guys, was I applied the wrong livery uh, when I restarted the aircraft and tried to get everything set back up. So I'm applying the right livery now, and that's going to fix my call sign, which is one two one six uniform. So please wait a minute or two while delivery is being generated. All right, should finish up any second now. There we go. And one, two, one, six uniform in that uh, color that we decided on earlier. All right, so yeah. All right. Tenopar traffic, Cessna 1216 uniform is taking off runway 15, departing to the northwest, Tenopar. All right. Landing lights and strobe lights come on. That's lights. Camera is all is 1200 altitude reporting and action. Uh, my my compass is in sync. All right. All right. And let me get my flaps in. Mixture is linked. Mixture four. I don't know why, but on takeoff we did. Hot wind, but it should be fairly straight down the runway. Track that middle line, rotate. And this is this plane does have a stow kit, so and that's me on the rudders. up and 
and we are looking good. Um, we can step on that ball a little bit. Alright, so let's go ahead and engage our autopilot. So we want to go with now. Vertical speed and 700 feet a minute works for us. And if everything goes accordingly, then hopefully we'll intercept the. I tell you, it's not going accordingly. Uh, see, CDI is on GPS. So yeah, and now I can bring my chart back. So missed approach is climbing to 6300, climbing left to 11 direct. Uh, let's see now, this right here may have some maybe for, for turbo and jets only. I don't see anything that says for turbo and jet aircraft only. Um, so, minimal is going to be 591 or 6, uh, 5,915 5, feet. sure how to read these categories um, but um, so we'll make a minimal 6,000 I remember where to put that pop that out it's not there utilities Flight timer. Female is enabled. Um, let's try procedures. I didn't think it was under procedures. I didn't think it was here. Uh, way off, way off. 
I was hen flying I would do a lot better job staying on course but I am I can legally make it through these clouds now all right Otherwise, I would have to divert or turn around. Okay. 10,000, 10,000. Strokes on one. So we can turn on our nails for what it's worth. If you can see my nails, you're too close. like I'm lined up pretty good at this point. Do have a little crab. And let's see, you know what I didn't consider guys? I did not consider icing and I cannot fly into icing conditions. Uh, what is the outside temperature? I should have an outside temperature gauge somewhere. That is one of the things about Okay, so didn't mean it. Well, just popped it out, that's good. Okay, air temperature is Oh man, look at the air temperature. I cannot yeah, I gotta ooh, look at them icing up. Icing up. Let me turn around. out of here quickly quickly and um, um, we call this um, Rena approach Cessna 216 uniform is unable to continue on course request vectors to nearest airport so shucks that sucks guys I should have
apply and maintain safe The Hawthorne works out fine. We are flat to Hawthorne and landing, for landing. See now. Stand by by checking with the Hawthorne. I think that's real nice. I don't think it's like all the ice is outside yet. Uh, I think they do. Well, the sale models it, but whether or not the developer models it is the question. And while I see a little white edge, I think that's real ice. Pop it back in. I like that I can pop up these instruments. I didn't realize I can do that. Okay, so so there's a there's an airport called Hawthorne right here, and we are up here, so we're gonna fly direct to Hawthorne. Does that work for you guys? So how the one is just on the other side of this lake. It should be over here somewhere. And let's see, back. And what we want to do back is go to the flight plan and do a direct to Hawthorne, which is um, Kilo H T N um, Kilo Hotel Tango Hotel. Direct to your airport. And then we're going to to direct to nearest airport. Another one, 16 nautical miles, and we activate that. It's not flying GPS, but once we get over this lake, then we can go direct. Actually, it's looking out the window. Go direct now. So, how the one is this information on how the one? Elevation is 4,200 feet, so the cabin's going to be 5,200 feet. And I was hoping to get some information on the runway itself. Runway, we got runway, um, so we got runway 10 and 28 and 3 and 3, 3, 3 and 3, let's see. So let's get off a weather a bus for this airport. Put the comp on so I can hear it now. And frames of change. Yeah, I didn't put a squat code in, but yeah, we're back to VFR, so drop down to 6,500. This is odd, so 5,500. Give me the 5,500. And this is just a reference for me. And 5,200 is pattern. And let's see, preview. Let's get back up to our map. Yeah, so I am. Uh, to the west here. Ooh, that's further speed, my man. Let me cover that water. So we're doing, um, I don't know, it's nice to pop it out. So I'm sending it 600 feet a minute. And there's Hawthorne, and no, it's not Hawthorne. Let's go ahead and put our landing lights on, get that out of the way, because we know we'll be landing soon. Uh, we're 9.4 nautical miles from Hawthorne. All right, so let's um, turn that bug. And the questioning really is, let's see, now, check out some more. Because I'm going to need to increase my descent quite a bit. So let's see. I got hot one right here. Yeah. Traffic. Uh oh, traffic. Where are you? Uh, traffic is out oh, here. And looking. Looking. Don't seem to be a threat. Am I on the hot one frequency? Hot one frequency is 122.8.
Slip that in. Come here, I was on traffic. Set. I was on traffic. Cessna one two one six uniform on hills inbound for four stop from the northwest. Um, I was on right so uh, one six and one five. Uh, let's see. I think I think one five would be the best runway, but it may be close. So, given the prevailing winds at the other two airports, I am going to plan for one for runway one zero. Okay. So. Actually, probably should land to the west, which we get to a situation. I was on traffic, Cessna, it uh, went to one secure form, it was six miles, it was four miles inbound for runway to a full stop. All right, so. Let's lean it, son. Gas. Let's go back to the left tank. And let's see, I want the airplane. So we are inbound for runway one five. Um, so we will line up, for, do a, a base turn. Yeah, Hawthorne, Hawthorne traffic, Skyhawk, uh, not Skyhawk, but stationary Cessna is inbound runway two. Eight for stop and that's a poor call but I do know I want to do a downwind and 5200 was pattern I'm at um, I can't get an Adels for this aircraft for this uh, not an Adels but a meter I can't get a weather report Rich and do left traffic. Station arrow 1216 uniform is on left downwind runway 28 Hawthorne. Let me get rid of this guy here. And let's see, let's get trimmed up here. high here at the moment. Hawthorne traffic, Skyhawk, uh, station air, uh, 1216 uniform is on, is a beam, the runway for runway 28, full stop. Hawthorne, boy, I'm making some poor calls. All right, 
So let's get in landing configuration. Um, just put in one notch of flaps there. And extend this base a little bit. And zoom in a little bit. Hawthorne traffic, Skyhawk. Station arrow two. 1-6 uniform is turning left base, runway 284 stop the Hawthorne. Alright, let's look out the window. Right. Hawthorne traffic, Scott Hall, um, station arrow 6 uniform is on short final, runway 284 stop. See if we make this happen here. A little high here, so we'll slip just a touch. So this is the woes of uh, aviation. Sometimes you just it's, you just can't get to where you want to go. Um, so we didn't make it to Reno, um, but the weather just won't hear in it today. Um, so yeah. Strokes and landing lights and go off. Out on traffic, station there, six uniform is clear of the runway. Hot one. All right. Unfortunately, our FBO is way at the other end of the runway. It's um, here where it says Pilot Lounge. And so, yeah, we got a good little taxi. Okay, so we will park uh, beside... No, I don't like parking between jet aircraft because the space is always smaller than it looks. So yeah, we'll park on the other side of this guy. Right here. All right, think I hit the mark. Let's see. Well, not perfect, but I take it. All right, tax light go off, and brakes can come on, and we'll use cigar um, slim to shut down, which is. Um, them uh, switches so switches now lights can go off the only light on the switch on is beacon ling
recognition. And master. All right. And we are shut down. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the flight. Um, I'm not, well, I was going to say I'm not going to do the instant replay on the landing. Usually, I should do the instant replay before I shut the aircraft down. But let's just take a look, peek, and see if we can see what that landing looked like. Um... All right, that looks like a good place to start. Yeah. Okay, so this one actually went back, turned everything back on, so that's good. Runway. The float there. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So, cool. That's good enough. Y'all come back now, dear.